Okay, here we go. All right, here it goes. <laughs> Panel two, here we go. Okay. So a few months ago, I was struck by this article that calls out architects for roles in climate change. At first, I found this a bit jarring because like most architects, I was drawn to discipline because I wanted to have a positive impact. But despite good intentions, nearly half of emissions are directly related to buildings that we've designed over the years, as many panelists have already pointed out. Um, the tagline here suggests that data and modeling alone won't solve the problem, but the design culture itself needs to change. But what does that actually mean? What is it about our current culture that has got us into the situation? So from my perspective, to get at culture, that means that we need to get at how we think and talk about the issues, and that can really only be done at a systems level and then through events like this. I love this quote because it so clearly connects outcomes to organization. And I, while, while I believe in individual responsibility, I also recognize that we are products of the system. The statement helps me to be less judgmental about people as individuals and yet still name the things that are wrong about this world. And I think we can all be honest that there's plenty of things to criticize, as we've talked about. Uh, while our systems have been bro broken for quite some time, you know, I and my privilege didn't always see or experience it directly. But the added pressure of a global pandemic exposed the fragility of our just-in-time delivery, our addiction to cheap and convenient. Um, so, you know, we, we know that disruption was happening whether we like it or not, and while painful, has really started to inspire some change. The call to action has never been more urgent, and you don't need to look very far to see another hurricane, flood, or fire wreaking havoc. And we know that the way that we build is increasing carbon, which is changing climate, and that that vicious cycle is continuing as we the increase of natural disasters are adding even more pressure to the uh, stretched construction industry, making it more difficult to build uh, quickly and affordably. So you may be familiar with the story of the two fish swimming along, asked by an older fish, how is the water? Uh, they both look to each other and ask, what's water? And the point of this little narrative is that it, it, we can't always see our situation until we get out of it. Uh, so my experience so far with Nexi has been that, just an opportunity to change my perspective and to see things differently leaving traditional practice. So taking on a new mental model has been a way for me to hold on to hope. Um, and if every system is perfectly designed to get the results that it gets, then neither the system nor the results are inevitable. Uh, we can continue to look at problems with this linear A to B thinking, or we can stop adopting new ways of thinking uh, that are more relational and cyclical and the paradigm. And this is already happening as we hear today, uh, understanding how uh, things like HVAC systems contribute to emissions. We're already seeing a significant decline in operational emissions. Uh, the next frontier has, as we've talked about is embodied carbon. Uh, which we at Nexi are tackling throughout our value chain um, from our materials to process to thinking about how we design for disassembly. And at the first, um, we're tackling the industry challenges at the scale of the building envelope. Anyone designing energy efficient buildings understand that this is the first line of defense. Um, the envelope as it's normally built has many challenges to overcome, such as coordination, ownership of trades, detailing, all of which we've tried to assemble or address through our prefabricated panels. And we leverage the inherent benefits of offsite construction of speed, scale, and quality. And what makes them different is that we're cast using a low carbon next site, which is our polymer concrete that eliminates Portland cement. Uh, and is able to bond to EPS without adhesives, creating a non-toxic, highly efficient pa panel that can be used on many building types. This is an example of a housing prototype that's planned for the rebuild of indigenous community who were devastated following forest fires in Linton, BC in the summer of 2021. Our next seat panels are being used for the walls and roof for standard housing units and combined with CLT for a low carbon and durable solution. Uh, so this is a great example of uh, dealing with the effects of climate change. Here's another example of a showroom model that is being taken apart to be reassembled for a client as a laneway house on Vancouver Island. Beyond addressing the carbon of the product itself, we're looking to find a reliable method to reuse our panels at end of life to diverse way away from landfills. Uh, this next example is uh, the Courtyard Marriott. It's about to be up here. Uh, largest project to date. Uh, we've provided all the planning panels for a nine-story hotel. And this project is a great example because it's so typical of many multi-story buildings across the world that are optimized for their layouts and hence have a lot of repetition, but still often use bespoke design and construction to address the enclosure. So there's a lot of opportunities here to leverage the constraint of that form to, to do something more efficient. Uh, beyond our envelope products, we're also le leveraging partnerships with the other industry leaders to create turnkey net zero buildings. This way we can serve a market that is finally accepting the problem at hand, but often lacks solutions or know how to address it. Uh, so this store of the future uh, uses our panel as a platform that can integrate other technologies for full effect. 
systems thinking is a discipline for seeing holes. It is a framework for seeing interrelationships rather than things, seeing patterns of change rather than static snapshots. Uh, the construction industry has not increased capacity partly because it's not leveraged systems thinking. Instead, it considers the parts, the elements of a spec, specific trade, uh, building isolated from its context. Uh, because every product uh, it project is a bespoke design, design a new team structure, we're limited in our ability to gain efficiencies and improve performance. The focus of building products that leverage manufacturing, we can learn and build on our previous experience and continuous improvement happens because we define and measure each stage of the process. So in so doing, we also learn about our vulnerabilities because most because most systems are sensitive to change. In a linear approach to design and construction, we've often missed the connection between our intent and impact. And while data is not the solution on its own, it empowers us to better analyze systems so we can efficiently test our cause and effect. Uh, so we can see here that we can either tip this tower over or, or keep it standing strong. Uh, the famous quote, you can't measure, manage what you don't measure has been used in business for decades. Architects and design professionals has, have sometimes persisted the sentiment focusing on the qualitative aspects of design, which is still important, uh, but this moment in history calls us to learn from other disciplines to address the uh, challenges of climate and affordability. And while this moment of disruption is challenging and even a bit daunting, I am hopeful because I know that we already have many of the solutions and we're growing in our ability to fully leverage them. Modular and prefabricated solutions were outside of the mainstream just a few years ago, but have been rapidly growing in momentum as part of the leaders such as this on this call really being able to think outside the box. Working on these challenging uh, challenges I know is easy to feel overwhelmed. And about a year ago when I was struggling, my husband, who's a therapist, <laughs> shared these images and asked me what I thought was the difference between the flood and a riverbed. I could see immediately that it was a boundary, the river edge. And thinking about recreating healthy systems, we need to start considering limits and constraints, not as a challenge to our thriving, thriving but essential to it.